Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tom from Deep Video Live. I'm a little drunk. It's cold out. I got a, I got a cut on my finger that's annoying the shit out of me, but whatever. We're here having a good time out at the historic Halton Theater, and I'm here with a good buddy of mine, Colby Rogers from Copalalium and uh, Copalalia, excuse me, and about <laughs> 16 other fucking bands. How many bands are you in, brother? Okay, um, last I checked, I was in seven. Uh, but I've added this like cover band, so I guess that's eight, and then there's this other one that might like kind of revive under another name, so that's like nine, so it's just going up. It's just going up because, uh, uh, so what the people don't know about Colby, uh, if they don't already know, is that Colby is also a public school teacher and is in about nine different metal bands, so tell us, what do you have against sleep and money? <laughs> I'll sleep when I'm dead, said the cliche. Um, <laughs> man, you know, honestly, yeah, it, it can be exhausting and it can be overwhelming, but I do it because I love it. Uh, you know, teach. Te <laughs> Sorry, we got a little bit rude. No, uh, teaching. Quiet on the set. Teaching's the day job and it pays the bills, but I love it. And it, it works perfectly for being a musician, getting off at three every day and like. Uh, off on weekends, all these paid vacations and such, and then so it's perfect for being a musician. And then you know these other ba all these bands, I just have to balance them in the right way. I have to balance them in the right way. What you don't what you don't see is the rampant, uh, just unprotected. This is our. I love our scene. I love our scene. Um, that's actually yeah. that actually leads me perfectly, oddly enough, into my next question. Uh, tell us a little bit about the the DFW uh, local scene because Dallas proper in the city has a thriving, absolutely booming metal scene, and uh, not uh, not to downplay the local like Arlington and Fort Worth, uh, Grand Prairie, all that uh, the local surrounding area scenes, but uh, post COVID, it's still kind of coming back, and it's it's doing a very good job. We have a good turnout here for a Thursday night. But um, yeah. yeah, give us your uh, thoughts on that. You have a really good perspective on what it's been like pre and post COVID. So give us your thoughts on that. Man, there's there's been ebbs and flows for sure ever since COVID. Like right after COVID, there was a bit of a spike I felt because everyone was like, oh, hell yeah, I can get back to shows. And then it dipped, you know, I don't, do I have the answer to why? I don't know, you know, it seemed like more people were working nights and the economy was rough and this and that streaming, you know, like live, live streaming on shows and stuff, all kinds of stuff. I mean, so there's been some valleys as well, but I'm seeing it back on the upswing lately, thanks to a multitude of factors. Like he said, we're here on a Thursday night. We got a badass turnout here. And, you know, recently on December 2nd, there was this free show that was thrown with like eight incredible bands and place was packed and then there was this upon a burning body show place was packed so i'm seeing things head in the right direction and it just takes all of us you know working together as a scene to put it back to where it was because you know i don't know like five or six years ago i was always bragging about how this was the best scene and i've witnessed other scenes you know i've played in other cities and this was always one of the best and it's it's going to be that again it's going to be that again hell yeah brother and uh so let's cycle back a little bit uh what does it take to balance the uh the work life aspect yeah. of what you do because th there is no harder worker than this guy right here so give us a little insight as to uh the abuse that you put yourself <laughs> through in order to entertain us fucking savages yeah so as i was saying before these savages over here were like oh, yeah. um, <laughs> it, it is a balancing act but my job is perfect for it and these bands all these bands they just have to trust me to like do my homework i can't practice with eight bands once every week you know what i mean it just there's not enough days in a week literally so they have to, tr I can't practice weekly with every band. I, they have to trust me to be a professional, to do my homework. So there's a lot of, literally there's a lot of homework that's done. And then when a show comes up, okay, we rehearse as a full band. And you know, when it's time to write, you know, when it's time to put the drums in, there I am. Or when it's time to put the vocals in, there I am. I, I have to, I have to be very deliberate with how I plan it or else I will literally burn myself out. And I have many times in the past. I have burnt myself out and be like, ah, oh, this isn't fun anymore. I want it to be fun. This is for fun. And 
I'm going to do it as long as it's fun. And I found a good formula lately where I'm able to able to get a decent amount of sleep and all that crap and still have fun. So, yeah, man. That is surprising to hear, frankly. But, yeah, it's just it's good to hear that sort of thing because that is exactly the sort of thing that unfortunately took out the beloved Trevor Stern at. He just got so burnt out and he had no infrastructure to RIP, bow man. away from it. But. Yeah, so uh, thank you for that. Thank you for all that you do. For, speaking as a fan and a friend, uh, just thank you. It's, you're I'm, an inspiration to a lot of people, bro. I'm, I'm humbled by that. I, I'm just glad it makes an impact. So, okay, here's a good question. Your students, there's always that budding uh, talent that's exciting to see from so many other uh like little kid, uh, quote unquote, little kids, the newcomers to the scene. So, what would you say is the most promising thing you've seen from a uh, student of yours, either either through academic or through through one of your students that you have directly taught uh, directly taught music to? <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. Um, distractions everywhere I look. Distractions everywhere I look. No, it's the quick, shout, quick shout out to Adrian Vasquez Absolutely. of Seven Sins Printing. Seven Sins Rules. I will not go with anyone else for my merch. Yeah, Even though he's flashing his ass at me right now. Actually, that. especially because he's doing that. Yeah, <laughs> that's called viral marketing. <laughs> viral marketing. So uh, to answer your question, there is literally inside these walls right now a former student of mine. That's fantastic. He's at this show. He is a freaking metalhead. And he is so passionate. He's up there, I guarantee you right now, head banging his ass off. And if there's a mosh pit, he's in it. And I, he he was at my school a few years ago. That's that's inspiring to me. I've had other uh, I've had other former students go to my shows. You know, that's a way I connect with my students is by I teach high school English. High school English. And that's a way I connect with my students. It's like they've never had a teacher who plays metal bands you know so and um, I've just I have this whole wall in my classroom of all these notes students have written to me and they are they they are my inspiration that I, I mean that man like uh, just like music teaching you can get burnt out but then they'll give you a note like that and you're just like this is why I do it brings it right so back for you I imagine What's that? I said, I imagine it brings it right back for you. It brings it right back. And it brings a tear to my eye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's really awesome to see. Uh, you, you've been, I've been seeing this a lot actually at the, uh, at the past several shows over the past like year or two. There's been a huge influx of younger fans coming in, yeah. ranging from you know, like high school students, college kids, to straight up like little kids, knee high to a grasshopper. Uh, it's it's really refreshing to see the next generation in action, and I imagine it's it's inspiring to know that you're at least a part of it. You know. Yes, absolutely. You know, um, I've been in this scene since 2010, and there's a lot of people who I used to see around back then. You just don't see them anymore. They're for whatever reason, but there's an influx. The it, the scene is. The scene has great potential because these young kids are coming in with energy. They're coming in with a new energy. Like when I was just playing here a minute ago at 7.30, there were some young kids trying to start that pit. And they did for a while. I saw it. It was awesome. And I, you know, we appreciate that when we're on stage. Uh, and yeah, that, that's the key to all this for me is youth equals energy. They're bringing the energy, man. Pit. Get it, in, get it in while you can before the gray hairs and the bad knees show up, kids. <laughs> yeah, for real, dude. <laughs> so, uh, all right, so I got two more uh, questions for you. This is going to be a recurring segment that I like to do with a lot of different uh, bands because metal is so universal. It comes from all different areas. It's really worldwide and nationwide. So tell us one thing about the DFW area. It could be scene-related or just in general, just from living here. Something about the Dallas-Fort Worth area that you really love, that maybe your average person, somebody who hasn't been here before, does not know about. Man, that's a good question. Okay, something that I love that the average person wouldn't know about? Yeah, no, no, you know, just like some tourists coming to see Dealey Plaza or whatever the fuck. Like, they're just coming to hang out in DFW for whatever reason. Yeah, something that's a little off the beaten path but that's worth checking out off the beaten path go yeah. to a metal show 
Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, you know, uh, that, that's that's the best. I could give you all these like obvious tourist destinations or things mm. like that. I've lived in Fort Worth, raised in Fort Worth my entire life. Um, I love Fort Worth. There's a lot of great stuff to do, but uh, the the peaks of my life in the last decade plus have taken place in these metal venues. There was Tom Cat's West when that was a thing. R.I.P. That place fucking ruled. And now it's Haltem Theater here. Fuck yes it is. So you know what? You're coming to DFW, go to Haltem Theater. That's what I say. There you go. boy. Okay. And then the other side of the coin of that, what's something that kind of sucks? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, you know. Well, um, we can be able, uh, it could be, uh, honestly, you know, uh, it's a it's a growing area, man. It is constantly growing. So it, <laughs> the population, it's just crowded sometimes. It's just crowded, especially especially in Dallas, but even more so in F Fort Worth the last few years. Mm -hmm. And I live in Arlington, and it's it's ever expanding, especially yeah. with the stadium and all that. So but. just that over that overcrowding, it's it's a thing. This is one of the fast. I believe the statistics bear out that this is one of the fastest growing areas in the country. So that's something to keep in mind. So yeah, come to the Halton yeah, Theater and come to a show, so, uh, support the local venues and the local scene, and then get the fuck out. Go back to wherever you were. Yeah, please <laughs> don't move here. <laughs> For God's sake, there's enough. Or learn how to work on a ranch. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us. Colby, thank you so much for your time, and cheers, brother. Cheers. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. You're Deep, Deep Video Live. Deep Video Live. Colby Rogers, Corporal Alia, Haltom Theater. Do it. <laughs>